Well guys, I have a viewer request. This comes in from Patreon supporter. And uh, I'm gonna have to say, I hadn't seen this movie in about 10 years. And it, my opinions don't really change. I just, with more recent information, you know, hadn't seen it since I really started to review movies. Uh, but now, you know, I'm taking it in a little bit differently. Anyhow, uh, this review caught it on Amazon Prime Video. Blue Velvet from 1986, I believe. Uh, directed by David Lynch. I think probably written by him too. Uh, there are some effective things going on in this movie uh, that you can kind of see done maybe in other works less effectively. What am I hearing? Anyways, uh, yeah. The transitions between scenes, the way things escalate, uh, the, the tone shift that is uh, fairly reasonably successful. Anyways, we got this guy called McLaughlin. His name's Jeffrey. Uh, I guess he's on board because he was in Dune, which flopped. Anyways, uh, there's this uh, idyllic town. I think it's called Lumberton. You know, you got like the 50s fire truck going by, waving at people. Everybody's got their nice, quiet, white community. Picket fences and roses. Uh, David Lynch really likes that 50s imagery. Well, uh, things are not all as they seem. This guy's out watering his lawn. Guess he has a heart attack. Seemingly drops dead. And, uh, you know, his dog's panicking, kind of biting at the, the water hose. And then you see the camera kind of go deep. Under the surface, there's bugs everywhere. You know, your symbolism that this quiet town actually harbors some secrets. Well, he goes to the hospital. His son, Jeffrey, a comic logline, comes to town. Uh, he's going to work at his dad's uh, hardware store, which has like two customers. Hell, has a blind employee who has a helper. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, he goes to the hospital, but he walks through this field for, at random and finds a severed ear in the ground. It's like, huh, that's a little weird. Now we got the soft, quiet blue velvet, uh, which is going to be stuck in my head for weeks. Thanks very much. And now things are getting a little different. We zoom in on this ear, it's infected, got these, you know, ants crawling around on it. Picks it up, takes the police station. It's like, well, we don't know anybody's missing an ear, we'll do some tests on it. Goes talks to like the detective's daughter about this and uh, uh, she approaches him, it's Laura Dern. Can't remember her character's name, but just gonna call her Laura Dern. By the way, it, I mean, not that she was ever like hot, but not hot here. <laughs> she looks very young. Anyway, he's uh, uh, she's kind of coming on to Jeffrey. She seems to think he's cute. A lot of film noir type stuff. The way how she's kind of waiting in the shadows and walks out of the shadow, and then boom, she's right there next to him. Oh, uh, wait, they want to investigate this ear. She said she'd overheard some stuff about this gal under surveillance, the singer. She's in this apartment. Uh, they decide to go check it out. Jeffrey goes up there, uh, spies on her a bit by pretending to be uh, some bug. Uh, oh shit, what are they called? Insect killers. It's not like an insect assassin, but you got insect genocider. Shit, I forgot what they're called. So he, he does that while, while she's talking to some guy in a, with a yellow jacket, the yellow man or whatever. He steals a key to her place, comes back there later. She finds him, thinks he's some perverted voyeur. Kind of gets turned on by that, makes him strip, gives him a BJ. He seems to be enjoying this. And I'll tell you what, Dorothy uh, Isabel Rossellini looks fairly hideous and jacked up in this throughout the movie. Probably looks older than her actual age, too. Anyways, uh, her like forced weird rape moment here uh, gets interrupted. Guy comes in, it's Dennis Hopper who is batshit insane. I mean, this is where the movie started to take this turn like, hmm, Ned, 
Oh, this, this looks kind of like a somber little film. Oh, hey, we got our 50s stuff. We've got our, uh, our call back to film noir. And, oh, now we have a dong belonging to the guy from Dune. A blowjob, I mean. And then we've got this, like, insane person showing up. Wants to be called daddy. Sips on some gas. Which I never saw a hose hooked up, but when he, he whips the uh, mask out, you can hear a hose effect. Gets high on some shit, thinks he's a baby, is into blue velvet, has to eat stuff, has to punch this woman. Yeah, shit. Yeah, Frank is pretty jacked up and memorable. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, Jeffrey's pretty disturbed by this, tells Laura Dern. There's this guy, Frank. He seems to be keeping her, this uh, woman's husband and kid hostage. I think she wants to kill herself, but we can't let her do that. You know, we gotta try to help her. All right, well, let's keep snooping around. Here's what we do. You have some boyfriend on the football team, screw him. You're coming with me. We're gonna go to a good dinner where she uh, she sings. We're gonna take a, you know, do a little bit more snooping, I guess. He goes there, he sees Frank. The guy that, uh, I, I don't even know, assaulted or so, whatever. Frank, he just franked her. Anyways, uh, tells this guy around town, does some surveillance, makes a little makeshift camera, spy camera type thing for shutter. See, there's like a well-dressed man, this yellow man, and all this information, he's gonna go to the cops, heads to the police station to see the detective he knows. And over in the office is the yellow guy. So it's like, shit, this guy's a cop. So maybe he's he's kind of in on this stuff, you know? He keeps going back to see Dorothy. Has a little tryst with her. She wants to get punched out, and he obliges eventually. On exiting her place, he runs across Frank, who basically kidnaps him and then pounds him around Takes him around town where he's got all of his drug buddies. They're going to sing some Roy Orbison, which sends him off. I like the way how Frank doesn't call the song In Dreams. He calls it something else. He calls it, like, Candy Color Clown. And he'll, like, insist on, the, on someone playing it as though he's a child demanding dessert. It's so bizarre. But, you know, this is a guy who has this, like, multiple personality psychopath thing going, right? Well, uh, yeah. He gets his way here and there. He manipulates everybody into doing what he wants. Uh, tries to assault uh, Dorothy again. Uh, Jeffrey punches him and he gives him a lesson in not punching him by beating the shit out of him. Uh, I like the way how Jeffrey goes home and like in the morning he sees his mom and I guess his aunt Frances Bay and she's like oh Jeffrey like and she's like you know what aunt? I love you but you're gonna get it <laughs> and, that, and then just the heart the cut the transition to the next thing just gives you that time to laugh so uh his whole plan is coming together about how this is going down and uh I, I think the movie just starts to go like oh I guess we gotta wrap it up we're headed to two hours because I'm just confused about what even happened and you know, in a mystery, typically there's somebody who comes in and says what went down. Well, he's like, hey, you know what? Dorothy is naked at my house for no goddamn reason. And, and we take her to the detective's house where she starts spilling the beans about how I'm a secret lover and shit in front of my girlfriend who all of a sudden loves me. And that's Laura Dern. And I'm like, where did this come about? You go to some dance, you kiss a little, and now I love you, I love you too. While you're banging the older chick. Uh, I, this is the kind of thing that makes me hate a protagonist. I'm, I'm trying to avoid goose shit. All over the ground. So, I mean, it, it's like, what the hell? He calls her in the morning, and she forgives him. So that makes me dislike Laura Dern. Go hang out with some dinosaurs. Or their poo. Right, there's geese everywhere. This is going to get ugly. Well, uh, anyhow, all of a sudden it's like 
oh hey I'm headed to Dorothy's place get the cops over there right away and it's like oh well what you know how do you know that the cops need to show up and he goes inside see it's just this weird scene this this guy in chair tied killed his ears cut off so it's like hey it's Dorothy's husband I, I mean, I, I guess, but at the same time, I think maybe Frank cuts off a lot of years. Because this guy looked a lot like, what's his name, Dean Stockwell, the guy from Quantum Leap, you know, the helper, who showed up early. I thought maybe this, something, he got betrayed, something went wrong, and he just went loose. Because we know this guy was singing the Roy Orbison song earlier, and it sent Frank into some rage. So I thought maybe that was what happened. And then the, the yellow man is some kind of comatose Frankenstein monster just kind of standing in the, off to the side beat to death but still standing I guess I don't think this is a normal thing in any part of the country so he's freaked out about this he uh, starts to head out sees the well dressed man come in he's headed up the stairs looks down at him and he sees it's Frank in disguise. So Frank had been doing some kind of drug deal in disguise and that the, the kid's now picking up on this. Goes back in the house, gets on police radio, hey, you gotta head over to Dorothy's place. I'm in the back bedroom. Throws the radio like under the bed or something, then hides in the closet, his main place. Frank comes in, he's like, oh, you dumb kid, I got police radio, ha <laughs> ha, you're about to die. Takes out the gas mask, goes more insane starts shooting up the place looking for the guy heads over to the closet I'm thinking okay Jeffrey grabbed a gun from the yellow man cop before he started into the closet he's got the revolver on him and he waits for him to open the door you don't know how many shots he's got left shoot him through the door you're the one who can see him he can't see you anyways blows brains out uh, detective a uh, pal shows up. It's like, hey, it's all over, Jeffrey. Then the movie gets in this dream state. Uh, earlier, Lord Dern said, hey, you know, I had this weird dream where the world was so full of evil and it's because there was no Robins. And then the Robins showed up and everything got better. Well, we, we see this happy wrapped up ending where, uh, by the way, there's a song in this movie that I downloaded when I first heard it, when I, when I rented this via disc at, at Netflix. This, uh, what's the name, Julie Cruz? Sometimes the wind blows and you and I float in love. And I'm not going to sing any more of it. You know, I got a pretty, pretty good Patreon request here. I got to give you your money's worth. Well, uh, you know, that plays a bit towards the end of this. And like when they're making out this makeshift house prom. A very un... A very un-80s kid house party. Okay? Anyways, uh... Yeah, I gotta wonder, does this even take place... This takes place in the 80s, right? I... I it's, it's like, does it? Like, I think... So, anyways, it's like we get this close-up shot of Jeffrey's ear, and now he's headed back into this idyllic world. Everything is all nice and dandy again. Shot zooms out. He's lounging around. He's got his girlfriend, Laura Dern. Says, hey, come inside. There's some food. Oh, hey, look. There's a robin. It ate some bugs. Look how cute that is. Hey, the robins have returned, everybody. It's the kind of weird, unrealistic type ending. Just so weird. Hey, let's have a Robin pose over here. I think it's animatronic or a puppet or something. But, but it's like, is this supposed to be a dream sequence? Oh, was it all a dream? It, it's the kind of thing that makes you think that kind of stuff. Though there isn't really any evidence to say, oh, hey, it was all a dream the whole time. And I hate stuff that goes that goes down like that. It's open. It opens the doors for all these fan interpretations. And I think that's part of why this movie 
has this like cult following type thing going. Uh, I think David Lynch was nominated best director. You know, the directing is not bad, but aside from Dennis Hopper, I can't really say anybody was a good actor here. Like Kyle MacLachlan, strangely lacking of emotion. Laura Dern tries for what she has here. I mean, her character is one dimensional at best. But our lead is just so, I don't know, befuddled. He doesn't have anxiety, he doesn't pan he's not panicky. He just kind of seems like he showed up to, to read lines. Uh, this isn't like a terrible movie. It's, there's some nice little suspense here and there. I don't, I think it's a little overrated though, but you know what, I'll give Blue Velvet two and a half out of four stars.